The year was 1901, America was booming, industries were thriving and the nation was on the cusp of a new era. President William McKinley was at the helm, steering the country through these prosperous times. The Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York was a grand celebration of progress and innovation. McKinley, known for his warmth and approachability, was eager to attend and meet the people. Electric lights illuminated the grand buildings, showcasing the latest technological marvels and advancements of the time. Crowds flocked from all corners of the country, eager to witness the wonders on display. For McKinley, it was a golden opportunity to connect with the American people and share in their excitement. On September 6, McKinley arrived at the exposition's Temple of Music for a public reception, a highlight of the event. Despite security concerns and the advice of his staff, McKinley insisted on an open reception, placing his trust in the American people and their goodwill. Little did anyone know, Leon Cholgosh, an anarchist with a hidden agenda, lurked in the crowd, setting the stage for a tragedy that would forever change the course of American history. Leon Cholgosh, McKinley's assassin, was a product of the turbulent social currents of the late 19th century. Born to Polish immigrants who had come to America seeking a better life, he grew up in poverty, experiencing firsthand the harsh realities of economic hardship. This environment made him susceptible to radical ideas, and he was drawn to anarchist ideology, which promised a new social order. Cholgosh saw injustice and inequality everywhere he looked, and believed the social order was corrupt, favoring the wealthy and powerful at the expense of the poor. Influenced by anarchist leaders like Emma Goldman, who spoke passionately about the need for direct action, he believed violence was necessary to dismantle oppressive structures and bring about change. Inspired by the assassination of King Umberto I of Italy, which he saw as a successful act of rebellion, Cholgos saw McKinley as his target, a symbol of the oppressive system he despised. He convinced himself that eliminating McKinley would strike a blow for the downtrodden and ignite a revolution. Cholgos purchased a revolver and practiced firing it, honing his skills and preparing for the fateful day, his resolve hardening with each passing day as he became more determined. He saw himself as a soldier in a righteous cause, fighting for justice and equality, consumed by a single objective, to eliminate McKinley and make a statement that would resonate through history. Inside the Temple of Music the atmosphere was festive. McKinley greeted each well-wisher with a smile. As Cholgos approached, his hand trembling beneath the handkerchief, time seemed to slow down. He fired two shots. The first bullet ricocheted off a button but the second tore through McKinley's abdomen. The crowd erupted into pandemonium. Cholgos made no attempt to flee and was quickly subdued. As the assassin was dragged away, the focus shifted to the fallen president. McKinley, though gravely wounded, remained conscious, his first thoughts for his wife, Ida. McKinley, bleeding profusely, was rushed to a makeshift operating room. Doctors worked feverishly to save the president's life. Despite primitive conditions, they managed to remove one bullet but couldn't extract the other. McKinley's condition remained precarious. Initial reports suggested McKinley was recovering, offering hope. However, gangrene, a deadly infection, set in around the bullet wound. Without antibiotics, the doctors could only watch as McKinley's condition deteriorated. His organs began to shut down, and his once robust frame grew frail. The nation watched, prayed, and hoped for a miracle, but it was not to be. As McKinley's condition worsened, the nation mourned. The news of McKinley's passing on September 14, 1901 sent shockwaves through the nation. People gathered to pay their respects and the streets were lined with mourners. Meanwhile, Cholgos faced swift justice. Arrested immediately, he showed no remorse during his trial and was sentenced to death. On October 29, 1901, Cholgos was executed by electric chair. The assassination marked a turning point in American history, ushering in an era of change and reflection. McKinley's legacy, though tragically cut short, left an indelible mark on the nation. His presidency was a time of significant change and progress. His assassination brought significant changes in presidential protection, leading to the establishment of more rigorous security protocols. The tragedy highlighted the need for better security measures, which have since evolved to protect future leaders. As the nation moved forward, it entered the dawn of a new century with a renewed sense of purpose and optimism, embracing industrial growth and innovation. McKinley's vision for a strong and prosperous America continued to inspire future generations, shaping policies and national goals. His contributions to the country's growth and commitment to public service remained a guiding light for many. As we look back on McKinley's life and legacy, 
we remember the enduring impact he had on the United States, a testament to his leadership and vision for a better future. Please like and subscribe to the channel.